I didn't think we'd be able to say that. I do. Arsenal are still unbeaten. Another month, another unbeaten run continues. I didn't think we'd be able to say that. I do know we'll lose at some point this season, but so far, so good has the month of October been to us, people. It's been a movie as it is. As you know, people, we've played Lens, we've played Manchester City, we've played Chelsea, we've played Sevilla, and we've played Sheffield United. I think there's a bunch of talking points. It's nice to see two clean sheets in back-to-back -back home games. It's nice to beat Sevilla coming back from the disappointment against Lens earlier in the month. You know, at the end of the day, four points off City and Chelsea isn't too bad, people. Of course, you know, the Champions League, the Sevilla game was amazing. Gabriel Jesus and Gabriel Martinelli, the Brazilian duo, were in top form, people. And we got to see that. Again, for me, the high of the season has to be so far, people beating Manchester City. We kept a clean sheet against Manchester City. We beat Manchester City. This is almost unheard of, people. And it's nice to take points off them. Definitely where you see certain Manchester teams, you know, beating Man City at home isn't for everyone. It's lovely to see Martinelli, I believe, now make 100 career appearances in the Premier League for Arsenal. In fact, that might be a lie in 100 appearances in general. It's nice to beat Sevilla again because it was, in my opinion, last, last chance saloon. I know mathematically we could have gone through, but it would have been a dark place. Back-to-back -back Champions League defeat. So it's nice to go to a difficult ground and get something. Whatever you feel about Eddie and Ketia, he got a hat-trick against Sheffield United. And it gives me a sense of pride to see our Hayland boy do that. I think that's his second hat-trick for Arsenal. And obviously his first in the Premier League. He scored his first goal from outside the area. Yeah, and it's so good. I have to show you twice. He had no right slapping that. That was a goal that Thierry Henry, our legendary number 14, would be proud of. And I'm proud of Eddie Nketiah. He deserves it. And I love the camaraderie we saw for El Nene, for Tomiyasu, for Eddie Nketiah getting his hat trick. It's a family vibe, people. You know, a family that, that prays together, stays together. And, we you know, you know, I do believe that with Arsenal. Don't get it twisted. We're not here to make friends. We're here to win games. But it's amazing, really and truly. Again, as I said, I'm happy that we haven't lost this month. And I'm sure you lot are as well. It's nice to see Bakayo Saka captain the club. I mean, you can't help but feel proud. And obviously see Eddie and Ketia get the captaincy. He's living the dream, people. Um, it's nice to see Tommy Asu get his first goal. And to be honest, I had to fight back tears when he came out with the revelation that his mum passed away last uh, a few months ago, people. You never know what footballers are going through. And it was nice to see him score because he's had a great month and had been great in all his recent appearances. Couldn't believe I got to see Smith Rowe start a game. And obviously, Emil Smith Rowe got an assist. I know I'm shameless, people. But with injuries in midfield, we're going to need everybody to step up. Speaking of midfielders, it's lovely to see El Nene back because he's the closest thing we have to party in terms of being a number six, excluding Declan Rice. Um, and it's going to be a big test this month to come. Nice to see Fabio Vieira score. You've seen many a player this season for Arsenal impact the game off the bench. We have to talk about lows. Losing to Lens in the way we did for me is a big low. While we rescued a point against Chelsea, and if you can't win, don't lose, for me it is a low because that was probably our worst 45 minutes this season. Had we have played as we did in the second half, in the first, who knows what would have happened. We shot ourselves in the foot just like Spurs. Obviously, David Raya still isn't exactly convincing every Arsenal fan. Martin Odegaard, since the international break, his form has deserted him. And obviously, where Kai Havertz is concerned, they're still concerned. Gabriel Jesus had the most touches inside the opposition box of any player in the Champions League. For the first time, three teams in Spurs, City and obviously Arsenal have 24 points after the opening 10 games, 28 games to play. But who knows, people? It's shaping up to be a good season. Uh, Eddie Nketiah, Odegaard and Saka have scored the most goals for our football club. Eddie Nketiah is one of five players in the Premier League to net a hat-trick. Arsenal have now gone 13 years almost without losing to promoted sides, people. Fabio Vieira's goal was the sixth penalty we've seen scored by Arsenal this season. Declan Rice's goal against Chelsea was our longest range strike since 06-07. When we played City, they only had four shots, which is undoubtedly a record of such people and good for us. We've kept back-to-back -back home clean sheets for the first time since December of 2021. And obviously, when you look at the games to come, we have West Ham, Newcastle, Sevilla, Burnley, Brentford and Lens. It's going to be an interesting game, people. Apologies about game. It's going to be an interesting month, people, in November as we get towards the end of the year.
So yeah, big up you lot, people. For me, I'm happy with the month of October. It could be better in like life. It could be worse. You know, I'm very disappointed to drop two points against Chelsea because we still have this element of shooting us ourselves in the foot. I think that's been the case of when we played a lot of London teams, when we played Fulham, when we played Spurs in previous months, and obviously against Chelsea. But they saying that you know to be unbeaten this season, remaining in in October, heading into November is great for us. Obviously, against the top six sides, we're still yet to lose. I think we've scored a decent amount. Of goals this season and to see two back-to-back -back clean sheets at home is great um you know so i'm happy with that as i said the highs of the month for me would be beating manchester city and the way we played against sevilla the lows would probably be lens and the first half for me against chelsea i still have question marks over our chance conversion and creation um i still you know, on the other hand, the table doesn't lie and the points don't lie. But are we necessarily to be devil's advocate? Are we playing well or are we getting a bit lucky? Now, there's nothing wrong with luck. You earn your luck. As I said, I like the fact that we're scoring goals. I like the fact that we're not giving up until the end. I like the fact that we're getting points, really. The defeat will come, but hopefully not anytime soon, if I'm completely honest with you. As I said, I think we need to learn how to kill teams better. I think, you know, you're never going to be perfect across 90 minutes, but I think we need to find that element of more consistency across 90 minutes. I would say, for me anyways, the opening... 15 to 20 minutes, I think we could start faster. I don't think we've scored um, this month in the opening 15 minutes, which of course I'm being a stickler, but I do want to see that. Um, I do want to see us kill teams early, really and truly. Um, so yeah, in terms of players of the month, for me, it would be Tross up for his cameos and, and what he's done. I think Tommy Asu deserves a hail up. Um, I think uh, Saliba has been great. Obviously, he locked up Haaland, boss of a performance. I think Martinelli has been good. And there's a bunch of players really, you know, big up Eddie and Ketty on his hat trick. Um, and it's nice to see Smith Row start. Obviously, in terms of concerns, you know, Thomas Partey's injury and how that will affect us and what we do in terms of the games to come is obviously something to worry about. I still need to see us create more and score more. I still don't know if we're necessarily playing well just to play devil's advocate, really. Obviously, Martin Odegaard's ultimately right now being you know, crucified for the high standards he set. I want to see my captain get back into form, people. Um, and obviously, I, I think Raya has been okay. I think a lot is made of it, but undoubtedly there is concern. So I would like to see Raya and also Kai Havertz look to convince um, the fans a bit more. But we just need to keep chugging along. As you lot know, people, we need to make it to the end of the year, still talking about what we're talking about. For me, still being in all competitions, really. So yeah, man, we're, we put ourselves back in the driving seat in the Champions League. We're ticking along in the Premier League. We know we've got the FA Cup in January to come and hopefully against West Ham to kick off the month you know, we'll do what we're doing. You know, there's a bunch of tough games this this month to come. So we'll have to see exactly what's in tell people. But, you know, so far, so good. Let's keep going. Don't forget to let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, people. Without you lot, it's boring. Follow on all the socials and stay blessed, stay safe. One love. <laughs>just as the big man ian wright said there people deluded i'm back again i hope you're doing well and safe you know happy morning to you lot people good morning good afternoon good evening and in some cases good night again i know we're not quite at the end of the month people but if i don't see you lot before the first of november premature new blessings for the new month appreciative to you lot locked in on twitch and on youtube smash the like button let me know your thoughts and i thought you know what that video was coming out at 5 p.m so if you missed it you know 5 p.m you'll see that i thought let me switch it up and Try a little thing, people. I hope you lot enjoyed that. But yeah, any talking points, questions, etc., get them in, man. Man said, Ra, you fooled me. You lot don't check the comments. I was saying, listen, don't get fooled by the outro, people. Um, I set that video to come out 5 p.m. And then I thought, you know what? You know, in life, you've got to try things. I thought, let me let it play and see what's going on. And appreciate justice as well, because I was a bit concerned. I don't know if the audio was playing. So yeah, thank you to you lot for that. It is happy days, Derek, for Eddie. We're gonna focus on Eddie in a bit and go over Mikel Arteta's press conference and all the 
news that's concerning our football club. Raya's not shown anything to show he's better or should be a replacement for Ramsdale. I agree and disagree. I don't think, you know, obviously it's not sustainable to have Raya and Ramsdale in this situation. Only time will tell what Mikel Arteta is exactly planning. Do I think Raya's 100% convinced me? Do I think, you know, there's no chance that, that Ramsdale can get that spot for him? Of course not. Do I think in big games, Raya's looked a bit shaky in certain moments? Of course. But when you look at his starting position, his distribution and all of those sort of things, I know there's been errors, but I could see why Mikel Arteta has brought him into the team. That being said, I would like Aaron Ramsdale to get some more games. And as I said, I don't think, you know, that it's all over for Ramsdale. But on the face of it, I do think he'll leave in the summer personally because it's not sustainable really and truly unless it's made clear to Aaron Ramsdale or David Raya who is number one and who is number two. You know, this season seems like a fight. If Ramsdale's cool with that, fair enough. I do think Ramsdale can play for another top club, but where would he go? You go Chelsea, you've got Sanchez there. So it's more or less the same, the same sort of thing. To be fair, they did have Kepa and Mendy and they both played significantly. But, you know, it's more or less the same thing. I don't think we'll sell you to Manchester United. They've just brought Onana. Obviously, Spurs is ruled out. Their keeper's quite good, and it wouldn't make sense for Ramsdale to do that. Uh, Liverpool, you're not getting ahead of Allison. You could go abroad. You know, I do think Newcastle, dependent on FFP, could be a good angle for Ramsdale, if I'm completely honest with you. I'd back him to take Nick Pope's spot. Um, but yeah, I think he'll be let go in the summer. I think Arsenal will be silly to let him, Smith Rowe, or any of the key players that you could make a case of departing the football club. Partey and Jorginho as well, departing mid-season. We're going to need them for whatever this season has has in store for us people so yeah man sensational month arsenal wise work wise for me not so great big up yourself p hopefully it gets better for me it's not been good either man like psh, just trying to tick along on youtube man we've been struggling but we keep going man thoughts on saliba zinchenko and havarts playing 90 heading into west ham it's not like we've got any other options really and truly and I, obviously you want to see us be a bit cute and clever like you probably saw with Kirill coming in and a bunch of changes. We're going to need them really. There's two big games this week. You know, Newcastle weighs on the Saturday. We can't look past West Ham United. Um, Havertz, I don't think he'll start. Saliba, there's every possibility and I do expect Tommy Asu, whether it's on the right or the left because Benjamin White has played a lot to come in for that game. I do expect Ramsdale to start on Wednesday. Again, we'll be doing a watch along for that, people, so make sure you're there for that. Delighted for Eddie, but I still have question marks over him. I think we all have question marks over Eddie and Ketty, people, you know. Again, I would say the goal for Eddie and Ketty, can you get 10 plus goals in the Premier League? Because, Again, we all know Eddie and Ketty are, again, he hasn't got the, the biggest of profiles in terms of goal scoring. He's 24 now. It's now time to start not bucking up your ideas because I think what anyone, well, regardless what anyone has to say about Eddie and Ketty, I think his mentality is superb. I think his temperament's superb. I do think he's improved as a footballer and I do think he's shown that he could fill in a void left by Gabriel Jesus who come into the side. Now, don't get it twisted. Do I want a striker that's a more proven goal scorer than Gabriel Jesus? Of course. Do I believe that you know, does it give me confidence as much as I like Eddie and as much as I like Gabriel Jesus that they have enough firepower in them to try and pip us to a league title? No, but I do like the guy and I think he's done all right. The key for Eddie is we know the game's left you know, it's, it's gone beyond strikers just scoring goals because you could be a great striker, score 20, 30 in the league. People sit here and say, oh, but assists and heat map and expected goals and all of this sort of stuff. Or you have Jesus where he's a bloody good footballer, a lovely footballer, but does he have that? He's got the ability and I don't know why he hasn't got it, but can he get 20 league goals? There's question marks. And obviously there's a lot of volatility around our goal scorers anyways. You know, I like Odegaard, you know, he got 15 odd last season. I don't know if you could do it again. I hope you can. I back you too, but you haven't done it two years or, or so in a row. The same goes for Martinelli, even though I think he will. You know, Trossard can fill in the void, but can he get them significant goals? The only one you can bet on, in my opinion, is Bakayo Saka because he's done it in the last few years. And while I like the fact that the goals are shared around, it's one of those ones. And of course, Eddie and Ketty has been in the Arsenal team for a while and it's not really fair. And I don't know how many 90-minute games there are, but 37 goals and 145 appearances, you know, and six assists isn't really the strongest catalogue of goals. He's just shy, literally, his next appearance probably against Newcastle will be his 100th Premier League game. Now, that's when I believe you, you turn into someone. He's got four goals and 19, 19 goals, four assists, sorry, and 19 goals in 99. So the product isn't there. But saying that, you know, he's literally scored in 50% of his games. You know, he's played 10 times. He's got five goals. My target to you now is can you get 10 plus? Really? Really and truly. And he got, obviously, a lot of it is inflated because he got a hat trick, you know, such is life. You know, he's been on a bit of a drought and then he bagged. And I do think there's games where he's actually played quite well and not necessarily scored. I think you go back to August. He was one of our players of, of, of the season, early, early doors, really and truly. So I think there is question marks. And just for argument's sake, how many goals did you get last season? And I do think Eddie Nketiah is improving in terms of his general play and all of that jazz, but he's 
quite limited to a degree uh, uh, in comparison to Jesus, and he is service reliant. And I mean, he did all right last season at times, but at the end of the day, he played 30 times, four goals and two assists. It's not the strongest of catalogues of goals, really. And two of them came against Manchester United. So it is a bit political. And when you look at his touches, he don't really have the strongest of touches. Like, how many did he get against Sheffield United? 38. Sorry, that's 38 touches against them. How much did he get against Chelsea? 10 touches, but he played 22 minutes. Against City, what did you get there? I can't even see 19. Fair enough. What did you get up against Bournemouth as well? For argument's sake, just to paint a picture, 32. So you kind of, you know, that's that's really and truly what he's averaging. And then when you scroll the way down on this article by Sky Sports, which I actually think is a quite good one, you know, it, it shows you the touches. He had four shots, obviously he got three goals and it was a screamer for the third goal, people. He made 20 passes and he had 38 touches. I think he had the same amount of touches as Smith Rowe, which you want to see Smith Rowe do a bit better in that. Yeah, 38, which is quite interesting. How much did Kirio get? Because I think you played all right. 90 touches. To be fair, you're a defender where we, we like to play out from the back. You're going to have more touches. Kai Havertz had 47. Fair enough. Declan Rice must have had more. 80. What a, what a boss of a player. Zinchenko, you know what it's going to be. 84 passes and 102 touches. Benjamin White, would you get? 75. Higher than I thought, actually. Saka, would you do? 40. Fair enough. Essentially. Martinelli, would you do? 56. So, again... There was a lot that could be done in, in a degree, man. But yeah, I, I think you're fully right to have question marks already. But I don't think, personally, I don't think there's enough in between. I think people kind of lie to themselves about Eddie and Ketty up, but I think the vast majority of it is kind of scapegoating. Obviously, he's wearing the number four team. We want another striker. We're building a team that potentially could challenge for trophies. Eddie and Ketty hasn't showed us. He showed us he's a competent player and there's a role to play here, but that upper echelon he hasn't quite got. But I do think people are unfair and I get it. Ultimately, you're playing for Arsenal Football Club. You're wearing the number 14. We're building a new system and things like that. And if another striker comes in, I don't think Eddie and Ketty will run away, but you could potentially become disposable because at least for Jesus, he could be benched potentially if a better striker comes in, but he can play out wide. I don't think anybody here wants to see Eddie and Ketty are playing out wide and I don't think he can really do that, man. There is such thing as an uncapped button. Not sure what you mean by that, but shout out you. Didn't even know you could do that on lives. That's sick. Appreciate trying the thing, man. Just, just trying. Your thoughts on City's pen? I mean, it, in, in in today's day and age, it's a penalty. In it's, it's scandalous. It's ridiculous. There's a war on defending. It's a it's a madness. What I would say to Hoyzlin is, you, you know, you're playing a dangerous game with street smart individuals. You know, Rodri's milked it. He's got the pen in it, really. Good to see YouTube working again yesterday. It wasn't. Ramsdale was the second or third best goalkeeper in the league. Allison, put me on the spot. Allison, Edison, they're better than him. He's got a, he's top five, maybe top ten. I think we should keep Eddie. He still has room to improve, but I'd still go and sign another striker. But then minutes are currency. I do think, you know, you could have three strikers on the on the bench. But, you know, Eddie's at that stage now where you need to play. I wouldn't need, I, I don't think he would. But, you know, if for argument's sake, if we went and signed, you know, I don't know, Vlahovic, Ivan Tony, whatever, you could make a case of saying, yo, Eddie going long, but then again, with Gabriel Jesus' injuries, there could be a role to play. I mean, you know, again, you look at Arsenal. If we was to look at the attacking third, for me, we need two centre midfielders. But if we focus on the attacking third and you're looking at how we can improve it, you would like a Pedro Neto or a winger there. We would all like a striker. Only so many players could be on the bench. So maybe a Nelson or Eddie would have to move on or they'd have to be prepared not to play significantly because there's only an X amount that you can have starting, of course. I think Ramsdale should play more games. I already saw that comment. Eddie was for Ferocious on that third goal, struck with anger. That's what we like to see. Big up the Aussies and good day right back at you, man. Big up DG. Eddie deserves his props, but let's not get carried away here. He still isn't good enough. I'll say what most people won't. He just isn't enough. Misses more goals than he scores. Uh, I don't think Eddie is someone I can rely on to score a certain amount of goals. But as I said, I think he could do a role, really. And not criticising it, because at the end of the day, it's Premier League games. But some people would rightly sit here and say, you know what, Sheffield United, boy, should be doing that, really. But when was the last time we saw a player score a Premier League hat-trick? I don't even, I'm 98% sure Bamian has, but I, I can't rise that up at this moment in time, really. Five and 10, so he's on course for 19 league goals. I mean, Eddie wouldn't undoubtedly go through a drought, but I would say I'd be very disappointed. And obviously it's got to be minutes adjusted and things like that, but I'd be very disappointed from Eddie and Ketty if he doesn't at least get 10, 11, kind of what Jesus had last year. Because if everyone's fit, you're probably going to play a, a, a second fiddle and things like that. I think the fact that it was the last man contributed to the pen being given, if that's on the edge with players in front, so it's not given. My problem with the pen is it won't be given nine out of 10 times. I think it... I, it 
I don't understand the consistencies really because I ain't got no sympathy. I know we've got awarded a lot of penalties, but we've also not been given them. So I ain't got no sympathies for anyone apart from Arsenal. What I would say is the most inconsistent thing is that penalty that was given in the Manchester derby. Let's just say there was a Premier League game today and the same thing happened. There would be, you know, I don't know if it would be given and then the, 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 the referees and all of these people will come out and tell us why it wasn't. As I've always said, I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but I genuinely believe they don't want consistency. I don't think there's a problem with VAR. I think it's the people that use it, if I'm honest with you. Um, I just think they want controversy. It adds to the entertainment product of football. We're talking about it. It's on all the radios and, and, and blogs and everything else. And it adds to the entertainment product. I just I just don't think they want consistency. I don't think that's what they want. Look how much money is in football, people. For the players, TV rights, et cetera, et cetera. You've got the best package you potentially can. With all this money and all these fat cats involved, do you really think that this system is a coincidence? Rise up the likes if you haven't, people. Uh, big up stylish. Do you really think this is a coincidence or is the system exactly how it is for a reason? I don't know. Ramsdale was definitely top top three in the league, way better than Raya 2. Which other goalkeeper in the EPL would you put over Ramsdale for top three? I mean, off the top of my head, you know, I do think that Spurs keeper looks all right, but I'm not going to do them propaganda. I would say... Only Edison and Allison, I'd sit here and say, wait, wait. But I wouldn't say, I don't think Raya's way better than Ramsdale. I don't think Ra Ra uh, Ramsdale's way better than him. I think they're both in the same bracket. I think they both got their pros and cons. I think they both got mistakes in them, really and truly. You know, and I'm not going to lie to you. Like, if there was a new Allison on the block that could take our system up to a significant level, like you saw with Allison, and he plays in defence, but Van Dijk, there could be a case of bringing in that and binning them both or whatever. What I would say is when, you know, Ramsdale goals, we're going to need to find another number two, essentially. So, yeah, it is what it is in that regards, man. Shout out to you lot. Ben is top notch. He's our most under underappreciated player in the, in the team. I actually think it, it, up until Tommy Asu started getting his love now, it was Tommy Asu. I actually feel people are disregarding Zinchenko now. I did think it was Benjamin White, but we've gone beyond that. But I, I'm starting to think it's Eddie and Ketty. I don't think Eddie's anything to write home about. Of course, I would like another striker. And I do think we're still doing this Arsenal thing in that we're taking guys that are, should be on the peripheral or squad players and making them starters. But I think people move like Eddie's proper rubbish. And it's not true, really. You can say you're not convinced. You can say he's not good enough. But you can't sit here and downplay what he's done in his own little way for the football club, man if I'm completely honest with you. With Eddie, he needs help, needs to get service, needs more goals, see what he can do. And big up Eddie, because he made up for that disastrous cameo against Sevilla, man. Not, not much between three and five, though. You hear with me? I hear that. No, DG Ramsdale's better, but I accept your point. Listen, I don't tell you what to think, just think, you know. I don't know Ramsdale from nowhere. I don't really, I don't know Raya from nowhere. I want the best for the football club. I think they're two quality keepers. I can't sit here and say I genuinely believe Raya is way better than Ramsdale. I can't sit here and say I think Ramsdale is way better than Raya. I think they're both kind of like that, really. If that's what you believe, believe in it. But at this moment in time, Mikel Arteta believes my man is better than him. Alison, Edison, Ramsdale, Martinez, Raya, top five. I can't lie, Martinez. If Playing devil's advocate. Could you say Martinez is better than Ryan and Ramsdale? Playing devil's advocate. I don't think Benjamin White... I think Benjamin White is under... He, I think Benjamin White was underappreciated with Arsenal fans, but I think now he's getting his clout. I do think Benjamin White is underappreciated, not within Arsenal fan base now, but the, 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 the wider realm of football, if that makes sense. I don't think anyone's way really better, but yeah, it's an interesting one. But as I said, could you make a case for... Martin has been better than both of them. I don't know, really. Why would VAR want that? Not sure what you're getting at there, but pick up yourself. Your defence really is in trouble, man, if I'm honest with you. So, yeah, man, appreciate you. Shout the Flygerians, the Nigerians tuned in. So, yeah, with that being said, let's start. Tab police, look away. Let's start looking at everything that's being said in the papers and just Arsenal talking points on Google, people. We're here for a long time. First, we're going to start with Eddie and Ketia Saka and Arteta's comments. Eddie cannot tell you how many times he's dreamt of scoring a Premier League goal. Man scored a hat-trick, wearing number 14, got to captain the team. Stuff of dreams. We all wanted to do that, people. And obviously, RIP is RE. You know, when you look at Tommy Asu talking about his mum dying and Eddie, a lot of people don't understand what footballers are going through. Martinez is better than both. I actually didn't want Martinez to leave first time, but Arteta did. I don't know if Martinez is as good as his feet with Ramsdale and Ryle, such is the range of being a goalie now. But yeah, I think you get the point. Um, 
He said, to do it at the Emirates Stadium in the Premier League in front of my family and friends is an amazing feeling. I lost my aunt not too long ago and I just wanted to dedicate that to her and her family. I can't tell you how many times I've dreamt of this moment to get three goals in a Premier League match. I'm a childhood supporter of the club. So to do it in front of the fans, my friends, my family and my teammates is an amazing feeling. It's a day I'll remember forever. And I did like the love Eddie got. I did like the love that Fabio Vieira got. I did like the love for El Nene. And I'm definitely missing out another one. But I do like the togetherness of these boys, people, really. Um, so yeah, big up Eddie And that third goal I don't think you'll score a better goal For Arsenal Football Club If I'm completely honest with you That's the cleanest I've ever seen you strike a football And obviously It's the first time I've probably seen you shoot From outside the area But that shows you What confidence can do He said I've been practising a bit From long range in training Emil Smith Rowe passed it to me Emil Smith Rowe passed it to me Emil Smith Rowe passed it to me Smith Rowe Hive Let's go The stocks are back We're shameless Passed it to me I had space I took a good strike And it went in that was a goal that, oh, that's probably the first goal you scored that Henri will be proud of per se, um, in terms of how it was scored. I was, and then he said on the penalty, I was going to take it. I wanted to take it. I always want to get more goals. I like that. Fabio came to me and he wanted to take it. He won the pen as well. He's expecting a little one. And it was a really good moment for him to get on the score sheet and dedicate it. And it's nice to see our subs still impacting the game off the bench. I'm a team player. I scored a hat-trick and I could allow other players to get in on the act. He took the penalty and scored, so we're happy. Fair enough. Nothing to say there. What did the big gaff for Mikel Arteta say? Well, it's not a long press conference there. But anyways, keep your thoughts coming and smash the like button. On what it's like to be part of Arsenal as a player, now a manager. I don't know why you're asking him that, because of course it's a privilege. I'm really privileged and really grateful to the people who gave me a chance to play here. When I was a player, it was Arsenal who gave me the chance to play for this incredible football club. And obviously it was the board who gave me the chance to be here as ads, whatever that says. But I think that means as manager. So I'm privileged on Eddie and Ketia and responding to people who say he's not top level. Well, to me, he's a top, he's top level. He started nine out of 10 Premier League matches. So that tells you how much we trust him and the importance he has in the team. I mean, you're right. You do trust him, Arteta. But it's a tiny bit of cap. You know Jesus was injured, but fair enough. Um, I'm really happy for him, an academy player, to experience a Premier League hat-trick. He needs to enjoy the moment. He fully deserves it, and hopefully there's more to come. On how difficult it is for a promoted side to compete in the Premier League, in my personal opinion, this is the best and most competitive league in the world. It's really difficult for us, so I can imagine for a team that is coming from the Championship how difficult it is, but big credit to Sheffield United. I watched all the games that they played against the big teams and how many problems they have created for him, for them and the small margins of how they just lost those games, so I wish them the best. And they did give Man United a tough game, but you know I don't think Man United at this moment in time is the best case study. Raya is more athletic and assured in his ball skills, but it will take some time for him to grow more comfortable doing it where the stage is bigger and the jerseys is heavier. Smith Rowe, prop, Rashford and Sancho need the rise. I'm here for it. Smith Rowe appreciation, man. I didn't want Eddie, I didn't want Emil, uh, Emmy Martinez to go, but Arteta made this decision. It is what it is. With time comes acceptance. On Arsenal winning the physical battles too, that shows the mentality and determination that the team wants and how much they have to respect every game and every ball. The influence that every ball has in the journey, you have to have throughout the game. They took the game in a really serious way. On Thursday, I gave them a big alert because the context and differences we have to play with the last City, Man City, Chelsea, severe games. I'm really happy with how they approached it. Another assist for Declan Rice. Smash the like button, people, and keep letting me know your thoughts. Yeah, for sure, this is the next step on things that we that we can evolve and help him to improve. I do think if Partey was fit, you might see a bit more of Declan Rice in the eight row. But what's that? Three games now, two goals and an assist. Obviously, you know, the assist against Sevilla, it's more Jesus get credit in him and assist. But lovely to see that you all count. And I remember Declan Rice's comments where he said, I should be getting 10 a season. So let's see if you could do that. You've got nine more, nine more. Yeah, you ain't here. Apart from the Chelsea one, you ain't hit one. Um, obviously, people, on giving the players a jolt ahead of the game, a jolt ahead of the game. They came from the national teams. We beat City. Then we had an international break. Then we had to go to Stamford Bridge. We did what we did at Stamford Bridge. And then we had to go to Sevilla. That's a really stressful week. In addition to what they were experiencing in the last few weeks as well, then you can have the tendency to think now we're going to play at home. And that would have been the worst thing we could have done to compete against this team today. On why Odegaard didn't play, obviously, Odegaard's form. I have no doubt Odegaard will get back to his quality. But since the international break, Martin Odegaard, I don't know where you are really and truly uh we went through all the minutes that everyone has played in the last few weeks he played an enormous amount of minutes martin has been carrying a little thing that wasn't very comfortable in games now i don't doubt that players carry a lot of things but if i was Mikel arteta obviously was uh, arteta says he doesn't look at the media and stuff but they don't live in a bubble i would I might put little white lies out there and say Odegaard's carrying a knock and things like that. Not to protect him because it don't really matter. If you're fit enough to play, you're fit enough to play. But just to protect him and 
some, some fans can say, oh, you know what? Maybe his form hasn't been there because he has had a knock, people. So we have to see. Um, we have players with enormous quality and we have to trust them. We believe it was the right day to do so. On Saka switching the wings during the game, which I was happy to see because I think we need to do that more frequently. There were certain behaviours of the opponent that could allow certain spaces in relation to how their holding midfielders were behaving with our attacking midfielders. He did that very well in certain moments. The timing was sometimes better than at other times. It was another way to attack certain spaces that we believe we sorry, that we believe were valuable today. On comparing Enketia to Jesus, I don't like comparing Kamonate. You don't like comparing to the public. I think they are very different, clearly. Uh, Eddie brings different qualities to the team. He's got an eye for goal. You look at the stats, he's remarkable. He needs minutes, opportunities and service. There you have it, service reliant. If he gets that, he's going to score goals, that's for sure. So what? No paragraph about Gabriel Jesus. But you have previously said he's transformed our club. On what level Eddie can reach? I don't know. He's already playing for Arsenal. He started games in the Premier League. He's already really good and he can be better. The best thing he's got, along with the talent, is his mentality. It's incredible. When he has that mentality and talent, he's going to get much better. Been capped by the country now. Big up Tommy Asu. Arteta said, I love him. Everyone loves him. He's one of the most popular in the dressing room. You can see the reaction of his teammates towards him. They wanted him here at the front, enjoying it. He's always very reserved and always doing things for the rest of the boys. He's a fantastic player for them. Told you lot, you lot loving Tommy Asu now. Go back and check the receipts. I told you lot, don't sleep on Tommy Asu and don't sleep on any of our players. We're going to need everyone to this season. On how tough the load has been on Odegaard. I think he has endured a lot. The last couple of weeks have been really good for the team. He's playing every game. As you said, he's had difficult moments, difficult period with the national team. It was a big blow for them with what happened, but this is football. He needs to get on with that. He's a massive player for, for us. Don't think I uh, lied. Saka said, you know, our star boy said, you know me and you know where I've come from, the academy. To be at the front leading the boys out today was just unbelievable. I'm lost for words. It's hard to describe this feeling. It's just amazing. I enjoyed it. It was a different experience. Obviously, I was learning on the job. Sometimes I didn't know where I was supposed to be. But in the end, we played really well, which was the most important thing. We got three points. Then he said three goals in relation to Eddie and Ketia, especially the last one. It was unbelievable. You could say he's probably he probably saw yours against Nottingham Forest. And would it be fair to say... Eddie and Ketia's goal against Sheffield United is, you know, October goal of the month. I don't know. I, I might edge that goal over Jesus is against Sevilla, but I feel Jesus' one was absolutely filthy as well. It's good problems, people. Um, if I'm honest with you, that's a man playing with confidence and hopefully he can continue to play like that. He's also a man who works so hard day in, day out. Not everyone sees it, but I see it. And if you ask the boys, they see it. He deserves this moment and he needs to enjoy it tonight for sure. Um, and then he said, it's looking good. We need to continue to build on this. Next week is going to be even harder with two tough away games, but we'll be ready. And hopefully we have a week just like we did. Fair enough, people. Uh, this was too old for Odegaard, so I won't bore you a lot with that. I mean, he's already said he trusts in, in Eddie. Oh, no, I don't think we've seen this comment, people. Um, I'm really happy for him. Three very different goals that required a lot of quality and composure. He had a few weeks where he hasn't scored. And today he had an opportunity with a great performance and three beautiful goals. He's always there. He's always available, always willing to improve and give his best for the team. He's played a lot. He started eight games in the Premier League this season. That's a lot. That tells you the level of trust we have towards him. He deserves it. His journey is extraordinary. He's one of our most important players. Oh, in relation to Saka, this is his role in the team and in the club has grown. His leadership and presence has to grow at the same level. He needs to start to make those steps. And I think he's ready for that. Fair enough. And that will benefit the country as well as him. Um, Arsene Wenger said the, the goalkeeper rotation, not that there's been much, doesn't work, people. The legendary gaffer doesn't believe, people, that this is sustainable. And allegedly, he's criticised uh, Mikel Arteta's comments. Let's see exactly what he said versus the headline. Personally, I like Ramsdale. If I was in his position, I would not give up. I believe he has the chance to come back into the team. Um, he then asks, is Ramsdale better than Raya? Better, better. I don't know if he's better. I just think Ramsdale has made decisive saves in games last season. They were not happy maybe with his feet, his distribution. There you have it there. I think Raya is better at that. To stop balls going into the back of the net, you know, on the other hand, when you're in his position, you always, you always, it happened to me as well many times. You have a good team, but you want to improve the team. Then you look and think, what can I improve there? You think maybe the distribution from the back. It happened to me the same with the centre-backs. You want a guy who has better distribution from the back, but then you realise he's less good defensively and his first job is to defend. Wenger then went on to save people. Always, that's my belief. I don't believe in rotation with goalkeepers. I don't believe in a lack of clarity on the hierarchy with goalkeepers. That doesn't work. You could say that's where the game's going. You could look point towards City and Brighton, but then you could probably say, you know, Edison is the number one and the same goes over there at Brighton. So we have to see uh, again. So big up you lot, people. Let's keep going. 
Big up my chi, deluded, my fellow three-point collector. Big up yourself. How are you feeling on this blessed Monday? Blessed, man. You know, I woke up with air in my lungs, trying to be better than I was yesterday. And I'm spending this early afternoon with you lot, man. So big up you lot. Even Martinelli's goal versus Sevilla, that Jesus turn. It's true. I mean, I'm biased. You know, if you score a screen, Mark, you kind of got to be there, you know. And to be fair with you, would it be fair to say Eddie and Ketty's goal against Sheffield United is an early contender for Arsenal goal of the season? I would say Jesus against PSV. Definitely Declan Rice is against Chelsea. Probably even Declan Rice is against City, which, I mean, against United just because of dramatics. Uh, Saka, I'm sure you scored a sizzler against Nottingham Forest as well. Good conversations, people. Moving on, allegedly, aren't Arsenal entered the race for USA creation wonder kid Dino Clapizia, forgive me for mispronunciation, and could make a move for the 16-year-old striker as soon as January, but Gunners face competition from Chelsea, Leipzig, Man United and Dortmund. So everybody's looking at him. Apparently, he's rated at 5 million quid. Um, he's played for USA and Croatia at youth level. I mean, he's 16 years of age. Obviously, depending on his passport and red tape, you can get around it. But I swear these lot can't join us until we're 18. I don't know. Arsenal scouts allegedly have watched him in the last three games, people. Never seen the man play. But, you know, bring these stars up tomorrow. He's apparently described as he's strong, quick and a sharp finisher off both feet. He's also good on set pieces. Apparently, Chelsea are understood to be watching him. But the main threat has come from Bundesliga size, Leipzig and Dortmund, which you're probably more likely to get immediate exposure to the first team people if you do that. Five million pounds plus a sell-on clause. Apparently, him and his family mu must make a decision, which they'll take everything into account. Arsenal's project and pathway potential is believed to appeal, appeal more than that of Manchester United as it stands, while Leipzig and Dortmund will also be watching. So we'll have to see, people. But everybody's watching everyone. Scouting doesn't mean you're going to move for him. Even the even Enketia's goal against Forrest, that Martinelli skill. True. Even though I don't think Martinelli meant it, but yeah, we continuously be linked, being linked with Mark Gurhey. I'm all for it, but you know, I can't see us definitely in January spending, I'd imagine, 50 million plus on Mark Gurhey, where you've got Saliba and Gabriel. Don't get twisted. More competition. If we everybody's fit, if you've got Timbo, you can play everywhere. Tommy Ass, you can play everywhere. Benjamin White, you can fill in a couple of positions. Zinchenko, who can do up inverted. Kirill, he's shown he can do something. I've probably missed out someone such as our things. If you could bring a next one in. Fair enough. And to be fair, we've been linked with Sport is Dia Monday. We have been linked with Mark Gurhey. I do believe that that is an area Mikel Arteta would want. Me personally, I'd love to address central midfielder. I think that's where we need our significant investment. The last guy we bought significant, Declan Rice, is doing well. Obviously, with Kai Havart, Smith Rowe, Fabio Vieira, Odegaard as like the false eight. I'm not really, I, I don't know what Arteta is thinking. You know, with Jorginho, Partey and El Nene, the wrong side of 30, Declan Rice is the only one that there's some longevity with. So I think centre mid needs to be addressed, if I'm completely honest with you. After that, of course, another striker and a winger wouldn't go and miss. And anything else, Mikel Arteta wants people. But for what it's worth, Arsenal are chasing Crystal Palace's Mark Gurhi with the Eagles set to demand a gigantic fee in the summer bidding war. And that's not what you want to hear, bidding war. So we'll have to see. Apparently, he's got a 50 million price tag and Liverpool, Man United, Arsenal and Tottenham Hotshire are all interested. Now there's some report that Mikel Arteta is undeterred and sees Gurhi as part of his future long-term plans. But Palace, boss, but Palace could demand a club record fee in the summer in hopes of deterring the Gunners boss people. The 23-year-old has kept up his good form for Palace and they may want more than the 50 million they made for Wan-Bissaka. So we'll have to see people. And for him, um, listen, it's Arsenal Football Club. It's the chance to play European football, same way with Liverpool and maybe Man United if they're still in it next year. But I don't think there's an issue. But if you're going, surely you look there and say, you know what, boy, if I'm going to make the step up, there's going to be competition. But you've got Saliba there, you've got Gabriel. Can I really eclipse them? Now, when you look at City, they've always had a couple of centre-halves that could play. And I don't know, Gurhi, to my knowledge, can he play right back or something like that? You know, you look at Ake and Akanji and, you know, Garvidal and Laporte, they could do a couple of things. Stones as well. Can he do that? Do I see Gabriel playing anywhere? I don't know. But you never know, people, because I do think I could. we could do with another centre-back. While I like Kirill, I just feel there's quite the drop-off where girl, he's closer to Saliba and Gabriel to have those three. But hey, it looks all right. And apparently, people... Chelsea have a first refusal, essentially, where they can match any bid. So there could be something. There could be the law of returning back there, people. You know, Palace will make a handsome profit on the 80 billion they spent, such as Gurhi's progress. He's only been there since 2021 and he's made 91 appearances for them. Um, so, yeah, he still has lapses in concentration and things, as it says there, people. Arsenal currently have a strong pairing of their own in Saliba and Gabriel. But as they hope to go, steep, go deep in Europe under Arteta, the demands of their squad ramp up. Fair enough. And he did score an own goal against us in calamitous fashion. So we'll have to monitor that. 
Liverpool and Arsenal target. Andre explains why he rejected summer move people uh, and he's still being linked with both clubs. I think he heads to Liverpool. In this past window, I didn't talk about it. The first time I'm going to talk in more depth will be now. It was really, it really was an irrefutable proposal from the club that plays in a big league. I think every player one day dreams of playing for a big club in Europe in a big league, but I decided to keep my word because when the January window closed, uh, the manager arrived and told me that he wanted me here until the end of the year. We didn't know that proposal of that amount would arrive. And I told him that regardless of what happened, I'd be here until the end of the season, which ends in December. It ended up passing and arriving in the middle of the year. We're still in the round of 16 in the Copa, the Copa Libertadores. It was a very difficult decision to make. I think if I'd accepted this proposal, I don't know if I would have felt 100% comfortable because I already agreed with Denise. He really values his word, his honesty. I know that when we do the right things, good things always happen. And in January, he told me that without a doubt, if I stayed, I would gamble and my value would increase. Uh, for me, I had I had not to think about these things and just do things the right way. Our team could be eliminated in the round of 16 of the Copa de Doris. We have to make the decision. Arriving at a final, everyone will say now that I made the right decision. I think it was a very faithful gesture on my part to stay, to try to get this title, to try to help as much as possible. So today, regardless of where, whether our team advanced to the quarterfinal semis, now the final or not, I was sure that I made the right choice. We are now in the final. We will do everything and I'll give my life to win this title. At the end of the year, I don't know what will happen. Many things could happen. I'm sure that having just arrived here, knowing knowing it worked, was something that helped me a lot as a person and also helped me in my career. I think that, as Denise said, when we make the right choice, when we are faithful, when we act honestly, good things always happen. So that's that. Uh, apparently, Aston Villa are ready to give Douglas Luiz a new contract after, you know, he's been linked with Arsenal. I don't think we'd prize him away in January. I think we obviously got an admiration for him, but they're preparing contract talks. We also know Arsenal are long-term admirers. 70 million for effectively a bench player. Could be a rotation option, but you'd imagine he'd be on the bench uh, from the start, really. But then you could say this is probably the going rate. You know, Grealish up until recently was holding bench at City. How much did he cost, really? But he's a good player, but I think Palace is his level. I think we can get better players in that position. I think we can get more value for money, but with the greatest of respect to Crystal Palace, I do think he could play for a team that's fighting in Europe or something like that. I do think he could play for a top four, top six club in some capacity, people. Uh, Douglas Luiz is contracted until 2026, 20, I and mean, apparently Aston Villa are ready to move again. I'm wondering how long until we're linked with Telemans, people, because it's not really happening for him at Aston Villa, and we will previously linked with him uh we all know Aston Villa are desperate to keep hold of Douglas Louise so I'm not going to give that much thought and I don't think you lot will either people Arsenal could sell Ramsdale next summer in surprise U-turn Arsenal could now part with goalkeeper Aaron Ramsdale next summer it's believed the 24 year old could be sold in 2024 which is why I like the fact that we renewed his deal because we're in a stronger position with the Gunners then free to go back into the market and sign a clear number two shot stopper Ramsdale's been unhappy with his second string status since David Rye's introduction and wants to move elsewhere to get regular football I don't think he's made a decision yet I think naturally that's going to go through your mind clearly you're going to be unhappy about not playing but I think, you know, it's one that we're going to have to see develop. It's believed Ramsdale wants regular first team football, not just to stake his claim for the three lines ahead of the Euros 2024, but also to keep his career on track at a crucial time in his development. Arsenal choosing to sell the shot stopper would be a surprise U-turn for Mikel Arteta, who was initially adamant about having two great goalkeepers in the squad after Ryan's arrival, people. So I have to see, as you know, we paid an initial three million to Brentford and then to make it permanently 27. So it would be a 30 million pound deal in, in all. He's been linked with Chelsea, but as I said, you could go to Chelsea. It's a big club, Europe, they'll be back and all of that. But you've got Sanchez, so it's kind of the same thing, essentially, Ramsdale. Um, yeah, screw up, just because this article is a bit better. Skipping ahead a tiny bit. Arsenal could recall youngster Marquinhos in January over a lack of game time with Nantes. Uh, he's apparently with Brazil at the moment, well, the 23s. Arsenal could be set to recall Brazilian youngster Marquinhos in January after his disapp disappointing spell so far with Nantes people. Um, the winger made the move to the French club in the summer, but has flattered to deceive thus far at Nantes and has started just one game so far. I mean, he's one that, a bit like Austin Trust, he openly plays well. We sell him and we keep it moving. He has made further four appearances off the bench, but has not played a minute of football for the French club since September. So you have to wonder why. Recently, the 20-year-old was allowed to join up with the Brazilian under-23 squad for the Pan-American Games in Santiago, Chile. So if you're letting a man go mid-season, that tells me... And I'm not saying they're wrong, that we don't really rate you like that. We don't really, you're not really a key player like us, like that for us. According to the Mirror, it's unclear whether there's a break clause in the deal, but the situation is being monitored by Arsenal's loan manager, Ben Napier, and sporting director, Edu. Hasn't Ben Napier left? 
and gone and been a de technical director or director of football somewhere. Uh, the Brazilian scored once in 11 league appearances, but his latest low move has failed to offer the youngster the necessary game time. I think he started well at Norwich and then kind of flattered to the seed. All I hope with Arsenal is that we turn this 3 million into 13 and we keep it moving. It's as simple as that. I mean, I'm sure, he, you know, He's wondering if he could have went Olympiacos or maybe somewhere else. And apparently there was also interest from Italy in, in the youngster. So we'll have to see what happens in that regards. Arsenal or Tottenham tipped to land 15-goal striker for bargain fee with Prem side on pole. According to reports, Arsenal and Spurs target Santiago Jimenez is available for a bargain fee ahead of the winter transfer window. Sorry for hitting the mic there. The 22-year-old has emerged as one of the best young strikers in Europe over the last 18 months. Did well in the Champions League recently. After scoring 28 goals in 50 appearances last season, he has 15 goals in just 11 outings this term across all competitions. Apparently, he's on the radar of clubs around Europe ahead of January. Arsenal and Spurs are understood to be among the forwards admirers, but it's been claimed that Postacoglu side are in pole position to sign him. A uh, recent report from 90 Minute claimed that Arsenal, Spurs, Real Madrid and Inter are all watching him. Sources have told 90 Minute that final are reluctant sellers, though recognise every player has his price. In order to buy him in as interested clubs will have to stump up an Eredivisie record sum, which currently stands at 87 million, 100 million euros, which Man United paid for Anthony. Crazy, isn't it? Despite this, transfer expert Romano has provided his own update. He said last season he decided to stay at final and sign a new deal. And now he's performing at a top level again with Arn Slot as manager. But what I want to clarify, guys, is that many of you have been asking me about Jimenez to Tottenham or Real Madrid because of the clubs apparently said by someone close to the player in an interview. What I can tell you after speaking to direct sources is Santiago Jimenez has no agent or intermediary. There's no one taking care of his business other than his father. It's important to verify that. From what I hear, something around 45 million euros could be the right fee to get a deal done. So let's see if that's in the January, January window or in the summer. Tottenham scouts have been following the player since last year and surely he's interesting for them, but also of many other clubs around Europe. This is why decisions will be made in the next month. At the moment, no statement from the player's father on this, people. We've been linked with Zuba Mendy and Chua Mendy once again. We'd love both of them. Arsenal have identified Real Madrid's Chua Mendy and Martin Zuba Mendy as potential targets. Crazy people. We'd love both of them. We all know Zuba Mendy has a release clause. Chua Mendy's going to cost a pretty penny. And currently he's injured at this moment in time, unfortunately for him, people. So I don't really believe that. That's one where I need to see it happen for first, people, really. We've already spoken on Ramsdale. Uh, what's this? Chelsea could sanction 22-year-old's departure in January. Arsenal keen in relation to Mudrick. You never know in life, but it seems like Pochettino wants to persist with him. So I can't see that happening. The, fur the report further states that selling Mudrick permanently is an option for Chelsea and they're currently evaluating his future. Apparently, Juventus and Arsenal have emerged as the main interested parties in the 22-year-old. We all know we tried to sign him. I don't really believe that. He signed like an eight-year contract and they spent the bag on him. We've once again been linked with Ollie Watkins. Chris Wheatley has been speaking. He said... Arsenal like Ivan Tolly, but they also like lots of other forwards in that position. Oli Watkins from Aston Villa is, I think, another one of those players. They do like him, but at the moment, that is as far as it goes. It's one to watch out for in January as Ivan Tolly will be pushing for a move away from Brentford. Uh, I think mean, there seems to be positivity where Timber is concerned, people. According to Chris Wheatley, people, he could be back sooner rather than later. We will be hoping to come, he will be, sorry, hoping to come back sooner rather than later. Arsenal's Sorry, January is a, a possibility. He's pushing to get back fighting fit. He won't be rushed by Arsenal's medical staff. They'll bring him back in good time. But January is a possibility for his return to light training. We'll see, be watching out and hope he's back soon. I think we do, but we've seen with Saliba, Gabriel Jesus, there's definite Partey. We bring you back when we're ready in it and not necessarily the moment of full fitness, people. So we'll have to see. Uh, we've already seen that with Odegaard. We've, I don't want to hear what Wenger said about Spurs. On Thomas Partey, pa Romano has said... Thomas Partey's recent injury is a blow for Arsenal. We And we are perhaps unsurprisingly seeing some stories come out as a result of this with links to new midfielders who could perhaps replace Partey. Still, my understanding for now is that Arsenal have not decided anything yet about a new midfielder. There's nothing to the links with Chiuameni. No talks, no proposals or anything like that. It's important to note that Chiuameni loves Real Madrid and they love him. So at the moment, there's nothing at all. He's a top player and I'm sure he could have a big future at Real Madrid. Even if it makes sense, they're often likely to see links between him and other big clubs in the Premier League. So the dream is free. The hustle is sold separately, as a lot of you lot know, people. So we can't look too far. And that shout out everyone that's been nominated for Ballon d'Or. You know, a bit harsh. Ramsdale was in PFA team of the year. He's been nominated for the Ballon d'Or alongside Bakayo Saka and Odegaard. You can't buy any minutes right now for the first team. So it is what it is in that regards. But I think we've gone over all of this, people. So let's start closing these things. And yeah, people, that appears to be that, really. 
Emre's going to put a crazy tag on Watkins. I don't see it. Isn't he in talks to get a new deal slash been given a new deal? So I can't really see it. Of all the wingers in Brazil, the fact Eddie brought Marquinhos enough said, so you want to recall him somewhere, to reloan him somewhere more game time. You'd imagine naturally that's that. With Ajax in downfall, if they get relegated, would you take back Atpom? Nah, G, big up Atpom though. Tellerman's no thank you. He's probably the most overrated player still. Harsh, man. Centre back is the last on the priority list. Centre mid striker, right wing, right centre back. To be, if I hear that. The difference with City is Ortega came in for one game and got a result. Edison was straight back in. And I think with City, you're right because it's clear like Edison's the big dog and then you got my man. But it is quite difficult to find a suitable number two, someone that genuinely wants to be number. I don't think there's a single player that's happy being number two, but it's difficult to find one. Like it only lasted for a year with Matt Turner. But it just makes you appreciate it more because when and if, you know, it's better to say if Ramsdale does get that opportunity to be reintegrated, he's going to have to take it with both hands, really and truly. It's been 12 games before Eddie scored again in all comps. That speaks for itself. Y'all go look and even watch the highlights. Think he got an assist in one out of them 12 games. Declan Rice, best signing last market. Eight more goals until he gets his target. Can't forget the Man United winner. Big him up for that. I'll Listen, I hope Eddie can get double figures. I think that should be the target. You're flirting with it. But whether he'll actually do that, as you know, the dream is free. The hustle is sold separately, people. So who knows in that regard? But on that note, people, just shy of an hour. There's no point wasting your time and being here any longer. We've gone over Mikel Arteta's press conference and what Eddie and Ketia and Saka have said. We've looked at the transfer news. And at the start of this video, we kind of reviewed the month of October. So it is what it is in that regards. As usual, people, it's brilliant being here with you lot. Don't forget, uh, Wednesday, watch along business and 5 p.m. A video should come out for myself. You lot stay safe, stay blessed, smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't. Make sure you have a great week. And as usual, appreciate you lot tuning in. Safe. <laughs>